Uh, it's over at the shelter over at the VFW, walked around some of the neighborhoods here, uh, talked to some of the residents. Um, there's no doubt that this community is facing uh, some real challenges in the aftermath of this hurricane. I want to thank Congressman Lance for being here with me as well. He cares deeply about this community and has been here for them uh, since before the storm hit on Saturday and is back here again today um, to see for himself so he can bring the word back to Washington about the things that need to be done uh, for us as a country um, to be able to make sure that people, um, people can deal with the aftermath of some of these natural disasters. Um, <clears throat> On Thursday and Friday and Saturday, I was saying to folks that um, it was going to be after the storm passed that we were going to see some of the real devastating effects of the storm, not just when the storm was hitting. If you spend any time in Manville, you'll know exactly what I meant. Uh, do it up here, do it in Little Falls or Totowa or Pompton Plains or Wayne, Fairfield uh, in the northern part of our state. Um, you know, these folks are suffering from near record flooding. And uh, I want to commend the people of Manville and the mayor for uh, their incredible spirit and resilience. And uh, I also want to thank General Reith, who's here with me, uh, and all the men and women of the New Jersey National Guard. They are an extraordinary presence during a time of disaster and emergency. I was saying to some of the soldiers earlier um, that I hope they appreciate what a calming influence they are when they show up. Uh, people who are in crisis here uh, from, from this type of situation um, calm significantly because the National Guard is here. It's going to provide them with safety and security and assistance if they need them. And they're an extraordinary presence. We're seeing record flooding levels across the northern part of our state. Nine river locations have reached or passed record flooding levels. So you repeat that. It's nine river locations have reached or passed record levels. The Assapeak Millstone River, the Passaic River, the Ramapo River, the Rancocas Creek, and the Rockaway River have all crested. And we're still going to see some major flooding in some parts of the state over the next 24 hours, because in some places the waters are still rising. The Passaic River still has to peak, but most of the other rivers have already peaked, including the Raritan. Here in Manville, the recent flooding was just below the record set for the area, and the waters are currently at around 16 and a half feet. So first off, the counties and municipalities uh, have done a great job at communicating to the people about flooding and timing and what direction people should take to keep them out of harm's way. Met with the American Red Cross over at the shelter, and with the American Red Cross, the county shelters have been home to nearly 5,000 people. Today I visited this shelter, as I told you, and we were able to deliver 5,000 shelf-ready, stable meals from the Red Cross to support not just the people staying at the Manville VFW, but in surrounding areas in the region that have been impacted by flooding and power loss, and Manville can be a headquarters for that. Other uh, shelters around the area can come and access some of those meals if they've run out of meals. And Manville's been good enough to host those meals um, and be able to help distribute them uh, if they're running out of food in other places around the state. They're going to need additional things in the coming days. We want to ensure we're ready. So Somerset County's 21 municipalities um, are ready to help, and many of them were impacted by the storm. There are three Red Cross shelters operating, and not only in Manville, but in Bound Brook and at Raritan Valley Community College. The Manville VFW shelter last night was told by the Red Cross had 325 people sleeping there last night, 349 breakfasts served this morning and most of the time during the day most of the people leave to go and deal with their homes and then they'll come back at night for dinner so they're expecting another 350 or more tonight for dinner at the VFW. Summer Anklin, Hillsborough, Rocky Hill, South Brown Brook all open their own uh, municipal shelters. And the OEM will continue to assess the areas that are impacted and the feeding needs and will continue to coordinate with the Red Cross and the Salvation Army to provide resources to the areas as we recover from the storm. There are also public and private resources being tapped to bring water to the area. A thousand cases of water from the Homeland Security Preparedness Stock. Um, this was the idea of the Homeland Security Director Charlie McKenna. Um, he has been stocking water and food at a state warehouse just for these type of problems. This is something that um, is, is new 
to New Jersey and one of Charlie's ideas. Um, and he's done an extraordinary job and allowed us to be able to move food and water in big numbers around the state to, to uh, shelters that needed it, including stocking the state-run shelters that we had at Menin Arena in Morris County, at Rutgers in New Brunswick, um, and at the IZOD Center. Um, about 850,000 customers lost power because of the hurricane. Currently, less than 600,000 remain without power. So um, just in the time since the storm stopped, a quarter of a million folks have been put back on power. Uh, more than 470,000 PSE&G customers have had their power restored from yesterday's hurricane. About 200,000 PSE&G customers are without power at this time statewide. Jersey Central um, has about 395 crews working on restoration efforts at this time. Crews have been arriving throughout the day. More than 125 additional crews are coming in uh, today and tomorrow. Uh, about 30 facilities, hospitals, long-term care centers, assisted living places have evacuated partially or fully, affecting about 3,300 people. Palisades Medical Center in North Bergen, which had been evacuated, reopened yesterday. Hoboken University Medical Center, though, remains closed. St. Clair's Hospital in Sussex County is currently evacuating and because of a power outage and a generator failure. Patients are either being discharged home or transferred to St. Denville facility. Uh, NJDOT um, has reported that there were 350 uh, incidents uh, of road closures yesterday. That's now down to 86. In fact, in one section of Route 80 in Denville, they rebuilt a section of Route 80 last night. Uh, we brought in a number of construction companies last night, and overnight they rebuilt 80, so that 80 did not have to be closed today for folks who were going to work. It's extraordinary work by the uh, Transportation Commissioner. Um, important note for drivers, please, don't be complacent. If you see flooding, don't drive into it. Um, you don't know how deep the water is, and we have had a number of tragedies because people got yeah, out, drove into water, they got out of their cars, and we've had a couple of people who have died as a result. Um, so please, if you see water, turn around and go back and find another way to go. DOT is going to complete inspecting all bridges south of Route uh, 195 by close of business tomorrow to see if there are any erosion problems and then work their way up the state. Um, we're working to restore most rail service by tomorrow uh, in the wake of all the impact of uh, Hurricane Irene uh, at the Trenton train station. Uh, the Trenton train station was under four feet of water this morning. And so there's no Amtrak service uh, between Philadelphia and Boston. Uh, it is a bad, bad situation on the Northeast Corridor. And so uh, as that water recedes into the Delaware River, uh, we'll be able to assess the structural integrity of the tracks in those areas and then make a determination with Amtrak about whether anything needs to be done to repair and reinforce them or whether we could begin rail service again in those areas. Um, limited equipment um, is going to be serving between Trenton and Princeton Junction, uh, but in the end, bus and light rail service is going to operate on a regular weekday schedule tomorrow with exceptions. Uh, motor vehicle offices expect to be back up and running with normal hours beginning tomorrow. Many of them were still open, but some of them have closed uh, because they were affected by the flooding uh, directly. Uh, as I said over the last few days, uh, we're not out of the woods yet regarding this storm. And, you know, I took a tour yesterday in predominantly in South Jersey. Uh, I went from Cape May to Atlantic all the way up to Sandy Hook. Um, the good news that I received today from the DEP commissioner is that you have just minor um, beach erosion. In many places, there's no beach erosion at all. And even in the places where there are, it's just minor. We've had DEP folks out there today inspecting all the beaches up and down uh, the shoreline and it's good news that our beaches are in good shape and so what that should mean to folks out there is you know it's a pretty nice day out and if you were planning to go to the Jersey Shore for the last week and into Labor Day weekend we're restoring power down there at a very quick rate get in your cars and go to the Jersey Shore if you're planning on doing it go ahead and do it um, there's no reason not to the lieutenant governor is down in the southern part of the state today um, she was there for the reopening of the casinos uh, today in Atlantic City, and she's going to be touring in Ocean and in Monmouth counties today uh, to let everybody know that, um, you know, you can head to the Jersey Shore if you were planning to do that, and if you're not planning to do it, there are probably some vacancies that you can now <laughs> fill. So be an opportunist. You probably get a good price. 
So go down there and, and let's enjoy this last week of summer. There's no reason for us not to do it. Uh, and certainly nothing that's happening at the Jersey Shore after my inspection.